in this class we will discuss about the solid state this is the first chapter in your chemistry that is uh, before going to the topic we will discuss about the matter matter means in anything which occupies space and how mass we called as a matter the matter can exist in the three states that is uh, solids liquids and the gases the solids liquids and the gases the in detail that is uh, liquids and the gases we are discussed in the first view in this class we are going to be discussing about the solids in in solids mainly two things we are discussing in this class that is about the characteristics of solids and the classification of the solids first we'll discuss about the classi uh, characteristics of the solids when it comes to the characteristics of uh, solids uh, means uh, that is they have the, they are having the definite shape it gives the definite shape and it's having the definite volume and the mass then these they are held by the particles in the solids the particles in the solids are held by strong intermolecular force of attraction strong intermolecular force of attraction then they are rigid rigid when compared to the liquids and the gases and uh, these are incompressible means the liquids and the gases be, we can be compressed but uh, uh, solids we cannot be compressed and a high density when compared to the liquids and the uh, gases then uh, the particles in the solid state are closely a uh, close packed arrangement of the particles means the uh, particles in the solids is a close packed along with few more uh, that is a uh, few more characteristics means the kinetic energy of the particles is very negligible in the uh, negligible in the solid state but we can find the uh, kinetic energy uh, in the that is uh, liquids and the gases because the energy is going to be possessed during its motion uh, in the liquids and the gases but these uh, in the solid state it is going to be uh, particles in the fixed position they are having that uh, constant particles in the solids have fixed position that's why the kinetic energy in this is going to be negligible then why the characters uh, that is uh, uh, solids are rigid and fixed volume and the definite volume is and fixed uh, rigid irutte yake anta kelta yake andre that is a uh, constant particles uh, uh, in the solids have the fixed position i said it's having the fixed position it, it can oscillate means uh, the particle in the solid is like this means close the particles in the solids are close means this can oscillate its mean position andre ade position nalle adu oscillate aagabodu athava vibrate aagabodu but it cannot be move from one place to the another place that's why it's having that fixed uh, volume and the uh, solids are rigid and the helbodu these are about the characteristics of the solids the next we are going to be discussing about the second topic that is a classification classification of, of solids when it comes to the classification of solids this is based on the structure of particles the particles may be i said that the particles may be atoms ions or the molecules molecules that is atoms may be that is particles may be atoms ions or molecules based on the the structure of particles the, the structure of the constituent particle and the geometry of the three dimensions the solids are classified into two types the first one we called as a crystalline solids first one we called as a crystalline solids the second one we called as a amorphous solids second one we called as a amorphous solids when it comes to the crystalline solids the first we will discuss about the crystalline solids means i said that it is classified based on the constituent particle means uh, the solid arrangement of the constituent particle structure arrangement like this the solids whose constituent particles whose constituent particle may i said the atoms ions or molecule whose constituent particles that is uh, are arranged in the definite order means it is going to be ad, uh, in the definite order the arrangement of 
this arrangement of the constituent particles in the crystalline solid in the adder in the order that we call as a crystalline solids example when it comes to that example in acl that is a zinc sulfide then will comes to the zinc sulfide uh, then naphthalene fats many examples we can give that is uh, potassium nitrate copper benzoic acid then uh, metals like silver iron sulfur etc uh, and uh, non uh, metals like sulfur etc this is all example for the crystalline solids then we'll discuss about the second type of uh, solids that is amorphous solids when it comes to the amorphous solids in the amorphous solids the, the solids whose constituent particles are not arranged in the order means it's having the different order in the crystalline solids but it, it is not order means not in the order the constituent particles in the constituent particles i said either atoms or ions or molecules not in the order that we call as the amorphous solids amorphous solids having that uh, uh, exa uh, example for the amorphous uh, uh, solids is glass rubber plastic fiber pvc uh, etc this is all example for that uh, the amorphous solids that is uh, glass agbudu rubber rubber plastic fiber pvc etc this is all example for the that is amorphous solids now we are going to be discussing about the differences between these two types of solids that is crystalline solids and the amorphous solids when it comes to that differences between these two uh, types of uh, solids uh, first we will discuss about the crystalline uh, crystalline and the amorphous solids what are the differences i said uh, due to the definite order it's having the definite geometrical shape that these crystalline solids having the definite geometrical shape but uh, uh, it, this uh, the particles not in the order in the amorphous solids that's why they do not have the definite geometrical shape they do not have the geometrical shape then they have a sharp melting point the uh, crystalline solids having the sharp melting point then amorphous solids they do not have the sharp melting point these are true solids that is the crystalline solids we call as a true solids and amorphous solids we call as a they are pseudo solids or super cool liquids you can why it's called a super cool liquids means it will be uh, one uh, instead i'm going to be say that uh, old building uh, windows you can observe means uh, that is uh, glass pans fixed to the windows uh, or doors of the old buildings it is invariably found to be slightly thick, thicker at the bottom thicker at the bottom yake andre idu amorphous solid agirudha glass amorphous solid agirudinda that is super cool liquid adu uh, it's going to be melting means uh, flow slowly it's going to be move glass flows down very slowly due to the uh, due to the fluid character and make the bottom portion slightly thicker thicker and when the window glasses are old buildings appears to milky because of the some crystallization uh, some crystallization becomes uh, some milky okay this about the uh, that's why only this we call as a super cool liquid means uh, it can be uh, slightly uh, flow flows from molecules in the and the uh, amorphous solids like a glass then they have a definite heat of fusion uh, amorphous solids uh, they do not have a definite heat of fusion then the constituent particle have long range order then the constituent particles have short range order then these are unisotropic they are isotropic what is meant by isotropic and i uh, anisotropic and isotropic will discuss afterwards then when cut into sharp edge tool the crystalline solids cut into sharp edge tool that is uh, they split in two pieces and newly generated uh, surfaces are plain and smooth but uh, 
when we cut in the amapur solids with the sharp edge tool they cut into two pieces with irregular surfaces i said that before only the examples for the crystalline solids and the amapur solids are crystalline solids uh, kcl uh, that is nacl kcl diamond and then you can give the quartz and aptheline like this example the example for amapur solids is glass plastic rubber uh, pvc uh, cellulose fiber these are all example for the amorphous solids uh, now we will discuss about the um, what is meant by i said that anisotropic crystalline solids are anisotropic amorphous solids are isotropic what is meant by isotropy isotropy andre en anta discuss martta hogona isotropy when comes to that uh, isotropy isotropic or isotropy means the physical properties when it comes to the physical properties electrical conductivity electrical conductivity or uh, that is a thermal conductivity thermal conductivity and uh, velocity of light velocity of light velocity of light and refractive index refractive index these are measured uh, uh, these are measured in any direction means yavde direction al measure madidru kuda will get the same value but uh, same uh, uh, are the same we measured in the all the direction this is because of no long range order in the that is amorphous solids no long range order then here the arrangement is irregular along the all the directions along the all the directions means here the isotropy means that is uh, uh, amorphous solids are isotropic means isotropy means physical properties like electrical conductivity thermal conductivity velocity of light and refractive index are the are same measured in we discussed about the general characteristics of the solids and the classification of solids uh, the classification of solids we are uh, classified into two types that is the uh, crystalline solids and the amorphous solids we, i said that amorphous solids are isotropy and uh, crystalline solids are uh, anisotropy what is meant uh, what is meant by this isotropy means the physical properties uh, like the electrical conductivity thermal conductivity and uh, velocity of light and refractive uh, index we when we measured this uh, like this if you are uh, the molecules the constituent particle are arranged in the irregularly not in the order if you measured in the any direction will get the same value that we called as a isotropy and isotropy means this we will observe in the the crystalline solids we measured the physical properties which one that is uh, thermal conductivity electrical conductivity refractive index then uh, comes to that uh, velocity of light velocity of light this we measured in uh, like uh, if you are taken the crystalline solids like this orderly it is going to be arranged in the crystal the particles is going to be arranged in the, if we measured in the different directions we get that different uh, values means this we called as a an isotropy means the amorphous solids are isotropic uh, that is crystalline solids are an isotropic now in this class mainly we'll discuss about the classification of crystalline solids classify based on that uh, based on the uh, constituent particles present in that we are going to be classified into and uh, Uh, into four types uh, the first one uh, here uh, not only based on the constituent particles it's also be uh, intermolecular forces between these constituent particles we are classified into four types uh, there is classification of crystalline solids uh, we are done into four types that is uh, the first one we called as a ionic crystals that we call as a ionic crystals 
the second one we called as a covalent solids third one we called as a metallic metallic solids third one we called as a metallic solids and fourth one we called as a molecular solids we'll discuss one by one now that we'll discuss first ionic crystals in this ionic uh, crystals the constituent particles i said the constituent particles may be atoms ions or molecules these three we called as a constituent particles in this ionic uh, crystals the constituent particles present in this is ions that's why only these we called as a ionic crystals the ionic uh, these ions are cation and anions at the lattice points lattice point these anions and cations are present these ions are held by strong intermolecular uh, uh, the strong uh, electrostatic forces in solid state uh, ionic solids do not conduct electricity why because absence of the free ions absence of free ions these acts as a insulators at the solid state when we dissolve in the water dissolve in the water it can conduct the electricity it can conduct the because at that time it is going to be gives the free ions that time it can conduct the electricity when dissolved in the water the ion become to free move and can conduct the electricity example for this uh, ionic crystals is sodium chloride potassium bromide potassium bromide then uh, the zinc sulfide cesium chloride etc we can be example for the ionic crystals i said that is ionic crystals first we are going to discussing about the ionic crystal here constituent particles are ions the constituent particles are ions these act as a insulators at the solid state and the conductors in the solution state then because uh, uh, it be uh, in the when it is dissolved in the water the ions becomes free to move and conduct the electricity that's why it acts as a conductor in the solution state now we are going to be discussing about the covalent solids when it comes to the covalent solids here the uh, the constituent particles the constituent particles are atoms at the lattice site atoms is going to be present at the lattice site they are connected by the covalent bond they are connected by the covalent bond that's why only this we called as a covalent solids then the atoms are non metallic in nature and the solids are hard and brittle these covalent solids are hard brittle hard and brittle hard and brittle and they have the high melting point due to the high these are high melting point the covalent solids having the high melting point and due to the absence of ions and the free electrons there is no i uh, free ions in this and the electrons that's why it acts as a insulators this acts as covalent solids acts as a insulator example for this is diamond diamond then silicon carbide etc these are example for the covalent solids the next we will go for that metallic solids third type of solids we call as a metallic solids these metallic solids uh, that is a positively charged metal ions at the lattice sites uh, is immersed in a group of electrons are held together by the metallic band here ionic bond in ionic crystals ionic bond in covalent solids covalent bond in uh, metallic solids it is going to be held by the metallic bond means a positively charged metal ions is going to be immersed in the group of electrons immersed in the group of electrons and these are electrons and the 
positive ions positive charged metal ions are held by the metallic bond metallic bond that's why it's called as a metallic uh, solids then it held by, uh, these are held by the that is uh, uh, metallic bond that is a positive Lee charge metal ions at the lattice sites is going to be immersed in a group of electrons. Group of electrons. Uh, that's why uh, that's why it's called as a metallic solids. Generally, these metallic solids have high density, highly malleable and ductile. Already you know that what is meant by malleable and ductile. Malleable and ductile. That is. Uh, when it comes to that uh, malleable and ductile means these metals can be drawn into uh, wires and thin wires and sheets thin wires and sheets that's why only this we called as a um, uh, these metallic solids are uh, are malleable and ductile then good conductors of heat and electricity due to the presence of free electrons in the metal ion that is a it is a good conductor of heat and electricity due to the presence of that is the free electrons in the metal ion example when it comes to that example for this is that is zinc copper then uh, gold silver uh, gold silver gold etc then these and all example for that uh, metallic solids next comes to that the fourth type of solids that is molecular solids these molecular solids based on the nature of attractive forces present in them the molecular um, solids are classified again into three types again these solids is going to be uh, classified into three types the first one first one we call as a non polar molecular solids non polar molecular solids molecular solids the second one polar molecular solids the third one we call as a hydrogen bonded hydrogen bonded molecular solids solids then first we'll discuss about the first one that is non -po on non polar molecular solids in this uh, the molecular crystals are made up of atoms means uh, the solids of uh, argon are helium are molecules here yeah, means uh, the, mole uh, the molecules are formed by non polar covalent bonds are called non polar molecular solids non polar molecular solids means here yeah, the molecules formed by the non polar covalent bonds are called non polar molecular solids here yeah, the these crystalline solids the atoms or molecules are held by weak dispersion forces that is London forces in this weak uh, dispersion forces are we can say that London forces example for this is solid hydrogen hydrogen solid hydrogen then solid solid hydrogen are solid helium or solid neon the second next we are going to be discussing about the polar molecular solids when it comes to the polar molecular solids these uh, molecular crystals are made up of polar molecules by covalent bonds are called polar molecular solids examples for this is uh, that is uh, solids solids of HCl, NH3, etc. Then next lastly, the that is hydrogen bonded molecular solids. 
This hydrogen bonded molecular solids, the molecular crystals in which the molecules are held by hydrogen bond between the hydrogen and the atoms like that is uh, fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen means the bond is going to be held by uh, between the, the uh, that is hydrogen bond uh, between the that is hydrogen and the uh, atoms like that is uh, fluorine, oxygen and nitrogen are called as a hydrogen bonded molecular crystals. Example, ice. We can take the ice example and uh, another example is that is a solid NH3. This is also example for the uh, hydrogen bonded molecular solids. In the previous class we discussed about the classification of crystalline solids. Uh, the main uh, characteristics of uh, crystalline solids is a regular and repeating pattern of the constituent particles. Uh, in this you can observe the, uh, in this that is uh, arrangement of these particles in the crystal lattice arrangement of these particles in the crystal lattice then what is meant by crystal lattice that is uh, the regular regularly arranged the regular three dimensional three dimensional arrangement the three dimensional uh, are orderly arrangement of points in space in a crystal is called as a crystal lattice means the regular three dimensional orderly ar arrangement of points in space in a crystal is called as a crystal lattice or this also be called as a space lattice also be called as a space lattice in this uh, now we will discuss about the characteristics of the crystal lattice when it comes to the characteristics of the crystal lattice each point in the crystal lattice like uh, these points each point in the crystal lattice we call as a lattice points we call as a lattice points then each point in the crystal lattice represents one constituent particle uh, this lattice sites are there no this is going to be represents a one constituent particle the constituent particle may be atom or ion or molecule or molecule that is uh, the each each point in the crystal lattice represent one constituent particle which may be an atom or ion or molecule then lattice points are joined in a straight lines you can observe these lattice points is going to be joined in a straight lines you can observe this uh, points we are going to be joined in the straight line uh, to bring out the geometry of the lattice to bring out the geometry of the lattice this is about the characteristics of the crystal lattice mainly we will discuss we discussed about the characteristics of the crystal lattice are the each point we called as a lattice point and these point each point in the crystal lattice represents one constituent particle that may be atom ion or molecule then lattice points are joined in a straight line to bring the geometry of the crystals geometry of the crystals these we are discussed until now we are going to be discussing about the what is mean by lattice point i said that is what is meant by lattice point lattice point is nothing but the are the points that indicate the relative position of the constituent particle relative position of the constituent uh, particles and the constituent particles have atom ion molecule relative position at also the name now in the current event that we call as a lattice points at the current of the means the relative position of the constituent particles in a crystal lattice is called as a lattice point that we call as a lattice point now we'll discuss about the unit cell in the unit cell you can observe that is the dark and shaded portion the shaded portion in this crystal we call as a uh, unit cell the if so pretty we draw this uh, unit cell means the can draw the unit cell separately that it's going to be represented by that the what is uh, this about the 
this about the unit cell what is meant by unit cell the smallest the smallest three dimensional repeating unit in a crystal lattice you can observe this smallest three dimensional repeating unit you can repeat this only repeated here this only repeated here. in three dimensionally that is it is three dimensionally repeating unit in a crystal lattice is called as a unit cell is called as a unit. now we'll discuss about the characteristics of this characteristics of unit cell this we called as a unit cell in this characteristics of a unit cell when it comes to the characteristics of the unit uh, cell the length of the unit cell along the three edges are represented by the a b c that is the length this we call as a lattice point this we call as a lattice point the length of the length of the unit cell along the three edges that is one another one another this we are going to be represented by the a, a b and c a b and c the angle between the edges are represented by the alpha beta and gamma alpha beta and gamma these six parameters means yeah, which one six parameters the a comma b and c and uh, that is uh, angles that is alpha comma beta and gamma these six parameters these six parameters The six parameters is going to be represented by the six parameters is going to be represent decides the crystal system is going to be decides the crystal system based on the variation in the edge lengths and the angles between the edge lengths the crystal systems is going to be classified into when it comes to that crystal system next. crystal system is going to be depends on the these six parameters that is a comma b comma and c and the alpha comma beta comma and gamma based on these six parameters it is going to be decides the crystal system it means these we call as edge lengths these are we call as angles angles between the edge lengths now these are classified into seven types seven types that is the crystal systems we are going to be classified into seven types we'll discuss one by one now is based on the that is uh, these six parameters the first uh, you can observe in this diagram cell the first one we called as a simple cubic this we called as a simple cubic in this uh, all edge lengths are equal and all angles between the edge lengths are equal to 90 degree means alpha a is equal to b is equal to c alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is equal to 90 degree this type of crystal system we called as a simple cubic simple cubic simple cubic means all angles are equal all edge lengths are equal that we called as a simple cubic example for this is sodium chloride that is a uh, NaCl then cesium chloride this is an all example for the that is simple cubic the next we will discuss about the uh, next type of crystal system that we called as a tetragonal in this tetragonal the a is equal to b but uh, these not uh, the a and b not equal to c but uh, all the edge angles are uh, that uh, angle between the edges is equal to the 90 degree that we called as a tetragonal in this tetragonal example for this tetragonal is titanium dioxide titanium dioxide is example for the tetragonal next uh, type of crystal this is the first one that is a simple 
cubic this is the tetragonose is second one then we are going to be discussing about the third one that is orthorhombic in this orthorhombic that is uh, you can observe on the a is not equal to b b is not equal to c but all angles is equal to 90 degree means edge lengths not were not equal to one to the another but uh, <coughs> angles <coughs> angles is equal to 90 degree that we call as a orthorhombic example for this uh, orthorhombic is barium sulfate that is barium sulfate is example for this orthorhombic next we will discuss about the rhombohedral in this rhombohedral uh, uh, that is uh, all edge lengths are equal a is equal to b is equal to c but these uh, alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma but these three is not equal to 90 degree this is not equal to 90 degree that we called as a rhombohedral rhombohedral example for this rhombohedral is that is the calcium sulfate calcium sulfate is example for this rhombohedral the next we will discuss about the monoclinic monoclinic when it comes to the monoclinic this a is not equal to b is not equal to c means all the edge lengths are different but these two angles are alpha uh, is equal to gamma is equal to 90 degree but beta is not is, uh, equal to 90 degree that we called as a monoclinic example for this is monoclinic sulfur that we called as a monoclinic sulfur is example for the monoclinic crystal system the next one we will discuss about the triclinic in this triclinic that is A is not equal to B is not equal to C. Edge, all edge lengths are different. All angles are different. That is alpha is not equal to beta. Beta is not equal to gamma. Gamma is not equal to 90 degree. That we call as a triclinic. Example for this triclinic is that is we will take the that is a potassium dichromate K2Cr2O7. This is the example for this triclinic the next uh, finally we will discuss about the hexagonal in this hexagonal a is equal to b but b is not equal to c b is not equal to c alpha beta is equal to 90 degree gamma is equal to 120 degree this we called as a hexagonal An example for this hexagonal is graphite this about the crystal seven types of crystals there are seven types of crystals based on the that is the six parameters that is the six parameters means three lengths edge lengths and three angles between the edge lengths